What's going on, gamers? It's Fox2. Today, I'm bringing you a headquarters gameplay on Hijacked, and I have been having a ton of fun playing headquarters. Uh, we didn't really, you know, the group of people that I play with, we didn't really play this game mode hardly at all until here just in the last week or so, and we've been having a really great time doing it. Uh, it's really a lot of fun if you've got a full crew, uh, people with microphones and stuff, and you can get that communication going. It really, it, it helps a lot uh, as far as being able to win, but it's been really fun. Um, it's a really easy game mode to get your score streaks going. You get a ton of points for capturing and for killing people when you're on the, uh, on the headquarters itself. You'll, you'll notice here I get off to kind of a rough start. Uh, this first headquarters on this map is just absolutely difficult. Oh, cooked that grenade a little bit too long. But, you know, I end up going 64 and 18, I think. As a team, we absolutely were murdering these guys, so uh, I ended up hanging off the uh, objectives just a little bit towards the end of the match and uh, just racking up some score streaks and getting the AGRs and stealth choppers going which I absolutely love my current score streak setup. Uh, Counter UAV, AGR, Stealth Chopper. It's a great combination. You almost always get the AGR and the Stealth Chopper at the same time. It's similar to the whole dogs and swarm at the same time effect, meaning you know the dogs chase people out of the buildings and the swarm gets the kills. Same idea with the AGR and the Stealth Chopper. The AGR chases people out of buildings, because they run from it and then your stealth chopper can do some work and you're gonna get a lot of kills with your stealth chopper so I've been having a whole lot of luck with that if you guys haven't tried it I definitely would recommend you giving it a shot um, but on to the topic at hand today for the commentary I'm not really gonna to talk too much more about the gameplay itself but I just wanted to give my subscribers all of you a chance to get to know a little bit more about me um, I've been really fortunate um, at this point in my life to where I've gotten to do quite a few very exciting things, take a, several really cool vacations and trips to different countries and stuff like that. So I figured it would be really neat and a lot of fun for me and for you guys to uh, hear about some of the different um, adventures that I've had uh, in the course of my life so far. Hopefully there will be a whole lot more to come. Um, so today I basically want to talk about uh, a study abroad trip that I did in Thailand. Uh, I've actually been to Thailand twice. I'll talk about the second trip in another commentary, but my first time to Thailand. It was actually my first time overseas to any other country, and man, I'm telling you, if you've never been overseas, if you're from America and you've never been overseas, you're missing so much. Everything is so much different and not in a bad way either. Um, it was an absolutely eye-opening and fantastic experience to be able to go over to Thailand. We spent, um, all in all, I was there for about three and a half weeks uh, on the first trip and I got to meet a whole lot of nice people, uh, learn a lot of neat stuff and see some really cool stuff and see some really crazy stuff as well as try some new things um, which is kind of what I wanted to talk about uh, during my first trip to Thailand one of the um, it's kind of weird to, to think about but one of the biggest Chinese restaurants in all of Asia is in Bangkok Thailand I know that doesn't make a whole lot of sense but uh, this place was enormous I'm talking like probably several acres um, for those of you that are um, from the United States, um, worth of worth of ground space. This place was absolutely enormous. I mean, we're talking it could fit easily hundreds, like five, six hundred uh, customers. Place was enormous, but they had all kinds of different um, shows where they had like you know uh, traditional Chinese dancers and all kinds of different stuff going on. But uh, our teachers that actually went with us and our hosts that were actually Thai, um, Thai people, they went ahead and ordered for everyone. So it was like a family style meal where there was just 10 or 15 plates of different entrees and you kind of picked and chose and tried, tried different things. Well, part of this was to try and convince us to try new stuff that we wouldn't necessarily try otherwise. and. One of the things that I got talked into trying is called Thousand Year Egg. 
And let me tell you, if you've never heard of this before, it is just as strange as it sounds. So basically what it is is it's like a duck egg or a quail egg that they basically like pack in like ashes and clay and let it sit for like weeks or months in some cases and it basically I mean without for lack of better terms it basically kind of goes bad like spoils essentially I'm not sure entirely how the process works but basically when it's finished the finished product the white part of the egg is like a grayish green color and then the yellow part of the egg I'm sorry, the white part of the egg is like a brown, like a dark brownish color, and then the yellow part is like a grayish green. And it, the egg itself smells like sulfur, and it, it's really potent smelling. I can honestly say it is the nastiest thing I have ever eaten in my entire life. Uh, I took like one bite of this thing... Um, myself and like two other guys that were on the trip the girls wouldn't have anything to do with it they were absolutely disgusted um we each tried like one bite of this thing and that was more than enough for a lifetime as far as i'm concerned it was disgusting but apparently um in asia and specifically in the chinese culture this is considered like a del like a delicacy it'd be you know like having lobster or you know filet mignon here in america so I don't know. It was it was kind of weird. I'm glad I tried it. I hated it, but I'm glad I at least opened, uh, you know, opened up to trying it and seeing what it was like because you never really know what things are like unless you try them. So you got to kind of, you know, broaden your horizons a little bit and check out some of that stuff that you wouldn't normally try. There was one other thing that comes to mind that was pretty strange that I came across. At least to me, um, because I'm, you know, from America, I'm not from that part of the world, that we came across while we were in Thailand, and it was when we were spending uh, some time in the very northern tip of Thailand, which, if you're not familiar with Thailand, which I'm assuming probably most of you are not, because you very likely have not been there because it's not a, t a popular tourist destination for a lot, of, uh, a lot of Americans. But anyway, when we were in the very northern tip, it's a very, very rural area and underdeveloped lots of uh very farm type villages uh with lots of rice paddies that kind of stuff fishing villages that's where we were at um so it's not like the big tall skyscraper um cities and stuff like that like bangkok and you know or like you know compared to like new york city or chicago here um but we actually took a boat trip across the river to the country of Laos, which is, you know, the river itself is only probably 50 yards wide. So you could just about throw a baseball from one side of the river uh, from Thailand over the river to Laos. So we took uh, a very short boat ride over to Laos and just into a little tourist market area that was right on the river. And we just got to see some different things. They had, you know, some monkeys and stuff that they were they had in cages for display. Um, they weren't selling them or anything. It was just their pets that they had, you know, just like you would keep a dog in a cage here sometimes. Um, so at this market, we found a vendor and they had this stuff called snake whiskey, which, you know, at first that doesn't sound entirely strange, I guess, because... There's all kinds of different weird names for uh, for different liquors and things like that, but there were literally snakes and scorpions inside the bottle of whiskey. I hate snakes. I can't stand those slimy little suckers. I, they are awful. That is not my thing at all. In retrospect, I wish I would have tried the stuff. Um, they were giving out free, like, shots of snake whiskey if you wanted to try. You didn't have to pay for it or anything like that. You didn't have to, like, buy a bottle of it. Um, just because it's so rare, you can't find that stuff hardly anywhere. Um, but just looking into the jar and seeing, I'm talking dozens of poison, you know, venomous snakes and scorpions inside the whiskey that you're supposed to just drink. I couldn't stomach it. I could not get over seeing that and, you know, 
it was really, really odd to me. But, you know, hindsight, I kind of wish I would have given it a shot. Um, if I'm ever over there again and get the opportunity, I will probably at least make an attempt <laughs> to try the stuff. I don't know. Oh, I get robbed of the triple kill right there. That's garbage. But anyway, if I'm over there and I get the opportunity again, I will most likely at least try to warm up to the idea of trying it. Because like I said earlier, guys, don't pass up opportunities in your life to try new things because you never really know if you're going to like something or you're going to enjoy something until you've given it a shot. And so, you know, the quote unquote moral of the story is don't live your life with a bunch of regrets because you never branched out and tried new things. Sometimes those experiences, good or bad, will be the things that stick with you for the rest of your life. And that's exactly how Thailand was for me. You know, the thousand year egg, I hated it. But I wouldn't take back that experience for anything in the world. How many people do you know that have tried one? So, anyway, that is the first episode of uh, this new series where I'm going to be talking about uh, different adventures that I've been fortunate enough to have. And I hope you guys really enjoyed this commentary. It was a lot of fun talking about it. Uh, I'll definitely be bringing some more here soon. And if you like the video, give it a thumbs up. And if you're new to the channel, click the subscribe button. Uh, there'll be new videos coming every couple days. Thanks a lot for the support, guys, and I'll talk to you later.